So guys, in this chapter, we are going to solve um, these limits, 1 to 27. Yes, so be with me. Let's let's get into it. So I've already solved it, so I'm going to explain how I did it. So let's get into it. So with number one, um, as in number one, let me make it big to you guys. Okay, so with number one, uh, let me take a pen. We are supposed to find the limit as s and y approaches 1 and 3 with a function 4x, four 4x four y squared minus x. What you do now is just simple. Just do some substitution here. Put the value of x inside, put the value of y inside, and you get 35. As simple as that. With number 2, two they ask us to find the limit as x and y put it to 0. And you know that um, just put the values inside. That is it, right? So we have it. Let me see. For number 2. As you can see, this is number two that we had, and uh, it's the same question here. So we just put the values inside, and at the end, you're going to get zero. Right? You know that sign zero is zero, right? So this is just simple substitution, right? Yeah, let's go. So number three, two is simple substitution. You substitute the values inside. As you can see from here, we have negative one, negative uh, two. So you just do some substitution, and it exists. So with, with this set of questions, they were asking us to use the limits law and continuity property to evaluate the limit. So we are using the limit law and continuity um, law to evaluate the limit. Number three, two, you just do substitution. Number four, two, is just substitution. So when number seven and eight, the next question was that, show that the limit does not exist by considering the limit as x and y approaches to zero along the coordinate axis. So along the coordinate axis, what does it mean? So along x axis, we are going to try it for along x axis and along y axis, right? So let's see something here. So with number seven, does it exist? So the equation given to us is the function is uh, three over x squared plus two y squared. In this case, x and y are put to zero. So then you put the values inside. The reason why this does not exist is because when you put the values inside straight, um, as x approaches to zero, y is um, as what x approaches to zero, you put zero inside, right? So when you put zero here, you're going to get three over y squared and Y approaches to zero because x and y approaches to zero. And here, you're going to get 3 over 0, which is what? Infinite, right? And it does not exist, right? So this value does not exist. You know that. You didn't get the real value, so it does not exist. The second, um, the B2, you're going to do it alone because number 7, you have A, B. Number 8 to A, B, right? So with a B2, the same thing. It does not exist because you're also going to get 1 over 0. 1 over y, when y is approaching to 0, it does not exist because... First, you're going to take along x being equal to zero, right? And just do that. So it does not exist. Let's take number eight. With number eight, it also does not exist because you're also taking it. So the first one, what you're taking is that y is equal to uh, the first one with question number seven, you're taking that x is equal to zero. With question number um, eight, we are going to take that y is equal to zero. Then you put it the value inside. So you're going to first put the value that y is equal to zero inside. Then you take the limit as x approaches to zero and you put the value inside. And you know that this will be very simple. So all does not exist. Number nine to the question we're asking us is that um, evaluate the limit using substitution, right? So we are going to use substitution. Um, so wherever you see x squared plus y squared, you are going to put in z inside. And as z approaches to what? Positive infinity, uh, positive zero. So what they did here was that um, let z be equal to x squared plus y squared. That one you should know. And you just put that. So you're going to get sign. sign. It's simple because if it's set while we should use substitution. So you're just going to put z. So sign z over z. And now z is approaching to what? Positive zero. In this case, you're going to use Lupita rule. So with this, they use Lupita rule because when you differentiate a constant, what do you get? You get one. And when you differentiate call a sign, what do you get? You get cos x uh, cos z and cos zero is one that's what they did that so in this case they use lupita rule so remember they use lupita rule right they use lupita rule question number 10 what they did here was that um okay we are going to use one we are going to solve one one of each right so with um it's in the badges so if you are trying to do this um you can have some time so with question number nine you know that they're going to do so here too you're going to put in z inside and the one you're going to use lupita rule you're going to use lupita rule so they use Lupita rule, right, for that. Are you getting it? And because when you differentiate 1 minus cos, and you're going to get sign S. And Z is, um, when you differentiate this, you're going to get 1. Note that because we don't want, you see, I told you something that when you, there are some functions that when you 
substitute the limit inside straightforward, you're going to get mass uh, undefined. But that's you need to use the beta rule to further on to see what you are doing. That so the same thing applies to number eleven. Then let's move on to the next set, which is number thirteen. Number thirteen is that determine whether the limit exists. If so, find the value. So number thirteen is asking us um. So we are determining whether this value exists. Does it exist? Then see this one. They expanded the, this one. They expanded because uh, multiples of is it difference of two squares, right? So they use difference of two squares and they did that. So in this from number 13, 14, what you use the number 13, 14, 15, 16, they use um, difference of two squares for that. So you do difference of two squares, then you do substitution, you get zero. So this limit exists. It exists, right? Because we had a value which is zero. It exists, right? So all of them you get zero because it exists. Because when you use um, difference of two squares, you're going to get it, right? Yes. Let's move on to the next set questions. Um, the next set question is the same thing using the Lupita rule. Let's take number seventeen. So number seventeen to um, number seventeen. This is it. Uh, number fifteen does not exist. Yeah, because when y along y, let me see number fifteen. What was what what was the question? They were asking us to find it. So in ways that you can use to find. So in this, they didn't specify whether you should use evaluated using um, uh, maybe Z or something. So you can use your own way. So number 15, as you can see, they did it along the coordinate axis. And you know that it does not exist, right? Number 17 to they did straight substitution. So the limits, when they give the question, you can do straight substitution. You can use uh, um, coordinate rule. They're using the coordinates. You can also use Lupita rule to do it. That, is, that would be very simple for you to do that, right? So let's move on to the next set of questions, which is um, number 23 to 26. Evaluate the limit by converting it to polar coordinate. Yeah, the polar coordinate, you know that um, with this, uh, R is equal to what? Is X squared plus Y squared, right? They are all things you need to know. I think it's a course, I think it's part of this chapter, but what we've not done about all the same, you can revise on that. So for you to understand, you need to know all these properties. The co uh, x um I think I've 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 um I mean, they are all there. I think s how how is equal to x squared plus y squared for number twenty three. Let's see. So as I said, right? So number twenty three. You see, I told you something about r, right? So they had y and r. So you are going to get you see r. So they had r. This is it. So R ln R squared, are you getting it? Because wherever you see R, uh, X squared plus Y squared, you're going to substitute by R, then you solve for it. Then the second one to, they use um this R squared, right? And Y ln X squared plus Y squared, they have R sine theta. So that one is, a, it's, it's, I think it's also related to the polar coordinate ln R squared, right? Because R, you know that Y is R sine theta, yes. You know, y is r sine theta, right? And x is r cos theta. So that one, they did some substitution and you get it. And number 24, two, you know that um, x squared is what? r squared cos theta squared. And y squared is r squared sine theta squared. And you do that. Very simple as that. So these are all. So I do, as I told you, finding the limit, you can apply all this. You can use the polar coordinate. You can use the substitution. You can use the um, uh, you approaching to the um, using um, coordinate system. That is making approaching to coordinate system, right? Considering along coordinate axis and using the polar. The last one they asked that we are going to use the um, this is for spherical coordinate system, right? So you have the spherical coordinate system and the um, um polar coordinate system. I think I'll go I will take through that. That will be a next chapter of my video. That will take you through that. Yeah, we'll take you through that. Be the next two chapters or something. So number 25, you are going to use the same thing, and that will be very simple as that. Um, let me see. Let's go to number 27. Number 27, today use the polar coordinates. Number 27, um, they use polar coordinates. You know, all these are polar coordinates that they have relationship mm -hmm. between. So you can just, for you to understand this, you need to know the relationship. Go to online or search for the polar coordinates of spherical, how to convert them and do that. But I think we'll, I'll, take you through, I'll take you through that. It's in the next chapter of my video. I don't know when it is, but it'll be next, next chapter. Yes. So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, the next video I'm going to take about is partial derivative, and I hope you watch the video. Let's move on to the next chapter. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope you.